Hello and welcome back to the workshop for another special edition of the uh, Black Powder Mad Minute series. Uh, this is one I've been wanting to do for a long time. We have a bit of a grudge match today. Uh, we have the uh, 1866 Chassepot infantry rifle versus an 1862 Prussian Dreiser rifle. Um, it's more or less 150 years ago that the uh, Franco-Prussian War ended and uh, I thought it would be quite interesting to pit the two main infantry rifles against each other. So we'll start with the Dreiser. Let's give you a quick rundown here. See it's a prolifically stamped and typical Prussian style. Now this has a date of 1869, which would be the date that it was entered service, not when it was produced. And it is a Spandau production one. Now this one has the Beck upgrade. You can just see there, there is not the usual um, air swirling chamber. This has in fact a uh, sealing system basically uh, copied from the Chaspo and adapted to the bulk geometry of the Dreiser. So I'll go into detail about that in a dedicated video on the Dreiser system. And the rear sight here is uh, also upgraded as a consequence because we have a better breech seal, therefore we had a longer range. And this is the sight looks very familiar because it's the design is taken over onto the Mauser 1871, so the, the successor to this. So it has a slider for extended range. Apart from that, it's nothing extraordinary. Note that the uh, ramrod here is captive, so it should not fly off forward on uh, when rapidly firing. You can see the depth of the rifling there in the barrel. And because most of these, well, all of them, fire a uh, sabo round, they're usually in very good condition. So in terms of ammunition, this is what I was using, a reproduction of the uh, M55 cartridge. So we have a powder charge, sabo, and the bullet sitting in it. And uh, that looks like this. This is the sabo. So this is what grips the rifling and transmits it to the bullet. And then this will hopefully split off at the muzzle. That's why it's got these uh, grooves cut into it. And the bullet will continue on its way. Now the bullet is this really funny acorn shape, which is not the most uh, ballistically efficient. And indeed, uh, let's say the, the range for accurate shooting of the Dreiser was about half that of the Chaspo. So um, unfortunately, as great as an idea as it is, and it's very kind to the bore as well. So these usually have stunning rifling still left because it's only ever been in contact with paper effectively. Um, as with all Sabo rounds, if something is wrong with the Sabo, uh, it all goes wrong. And in this case, I made these ever so slightly too thin compared to the first batch I made. Uh, so the, there won't be a target because it was, well, there's nothing on it and I saved on patches. Um, but that wasn't the point of the exercise. I just wanted to see how it handled at speed. So operating one of these at speed is non-trivial uh, because there's a lot of things you need to do. This is really the first gen bolt action rifle. Um, first of all, the opening for the cartridge is very small, despite the length of the bolt here. Um, so you really need to be careful putting it in there. Uh, then you need to close the bolt, push it down. Then you need to cock it, so it's cock on closing effectively. Only then can you fire. If you fired, you need to release the needle carrier because it also prevents the bolt from opening. You need to pull that all the way to the rear so it clicks. That also makes sure that the needle has retracted into the bolt. Then you can open and reload. So close, bolt, fire, back, open. So basically four movements. Well, five if you include the loading. Let's see how it does.
Okay, that was seven rounds with the funky clunky Prussian space magic. Now, uh, let's have a quick look at Chaspo and see how well I can do with that. So let's have a quick look at the Chaspo, which has a more traditional layout, let's say, particularly with the bolt. And here we can see the heart of the Chaspo system, which is this mobile breech face. So when the bolt is locked down in this cutout here, uh, once you fire, the gases will push against this annular disc surface here and compress this uh, rubber breech seal and that will expand radially and seal the circumference of the chamber at the back here and it's extremely efficient um, of course especially at the time when you had unvulcanized rubber um, these would deteriorate um, you know it would easily last the time of an engagement and probably even uh, a few um, but you have to keep an eye on, uh, on the state of the rubber. Um, for the shooting that I'm doing, I'm going to tip the sight forward, which gives me access to the battle sight here on the pivot point. And then for the forward, we have the bayonet lug for the famous Yatagan bayonet. And we have once again a... Uh, ramrod it is retained by a feature in the muzzle cap so this is not going to fly forward with every shot like all the others did now the origins of this particular chaspo are somewhat mysterious um, for a start it is well, it has remains of some bluing and uh, there are no french ownership markings or um, manufacturing markings whatsoever so no date stamp on the barrel anywhere no signs of it ever being there similarly on the receiver there's nothing there no signs of it being buffed away there are tiny inspection marks everywhere uh, also no cartouche on the stock and no government ownership hardwood plug there either um, one tenuous hypothesis is that this is one of a lot tested by the swiss government when they were starting out their uh, adventures into breech loading uh, because the literature I have access to says that these were provided blued uh, but that's the only tenuous link I have so concerning the ammunition this is uh, the uh, say classic cartridge so basically consider the Chaspo cartridge as a centerfire cartridge but with a paper case effectively the, ba the uh, primer here is at the base we have a uh, first element which is the powder casing highly compressed black powder the bullet sits on top and you have this paper patch which firstly acts as a patch but it is also uh, has a skirt at the rear with which you uh, you tie the powder casing to it so this would be the actual bullet used at the time pretty much a bore rider 45 caliber and uh, far more ballistically efficient than the weird acorn and what I'm actually going to use just for efficiency, because these take a horrendous amount of time to produce, is uh, my latest uh, Chaspo for Dummies cartridge. Um, there will be a tutorial now on how to make these on uh, other channels, because it's reloading and um, YouTube is rather averse to such things at the moment. Uh, but basically, pretty much the same thing. Um, primer at the back percussion primer uh, in this case cardboard tube is the case powder in there and the bullet on top and the bullet I'm using is the same one I use for the gra so it is slightly healed as you can see and just so happens that it fits rather nicely inside the cardboard tube which is actually for bubble tea and uh, these basically take as about as much time as it does to reload a uh, center fire cartridge so and performance is is the same so life is too short, so this is what I'm using from now on. So how do we operate a chaspo? Well, this time it's fairly straightforward. We've got a nice big opening for reloading, so you can just throw a cartridge in a different direction, it'll funnel its way in. Push it forward if it hasn't gone all the way in. Close it down, fire. And now it gets interesting because the bolt is locked. It is not self-cocking. Again, uh, good reasons for doing that on both of them. So we have to cock on opening effectively, open the action, and then carry on. 
All right, let's run it. Okay, the results are in. Seven rounds for the Dreiser, 10 rounds for the Chaspo. To be honest, it's not surprising that Chaspo won, simply because it's far easier to operate, but I wasn't expecting the difference to be quite that big. So if we combine the potential high rate of fire, um, the considerably extended range compared to the Dreiser, uh, the small caliber, um, it's also a little bit lighter, 750 grams, which, which counts in the long run. Um, it's no surprise that one particular Prussian officer was uh, said to have called it the uh, Klein Feiner Mordwaffen, so the uh, little delicate murder weapon. Um, when it came to a standard firefight between uh, French and German forces, uh, the Chaspo was clearly the winner in those cases. Uh, unfortunately, the war was not won by uh, infantry engagements, it was won by um, the Elftag's tactic of the Brush Prussians, a decentralized command and excellent logistics. However, that said, I will say that after 10 rounds, uh, the bolt was getting a little bit gritty. Um, it was getting harder and harder to cock to open uh, the action, whereas the Dreiser was quite happy and I fired this 20, 30 rounds without having any um, mechanical issues whatsoever to do with fouling. So there is a caveat to the superiority of this rifle. So I hope that was interesting and uh, I shall see you next time. I shall see what else I can try or get my hands on to try for a mad minute. Thank you for your support as usual, uh, in particular our patrons, and to keep up those comments on uh, whatever platform you choose to engage us on and I shall see you next time.